Hello friends, welcome to time classes. In this lecture, we will be discussing current affairs as well as the concepts in current affairs related to economy and the banking sector. So let's get started. The first question that we have on the screen is, which Indian space scientist has been named the winner of, uh, winner of the 2020 Von Karman Award by the Paris-based International Academy of Astronom uh, Astronautics. Is it Mr. Rodam Narasimha? Is it Mr. Satish Reddy? Is it Mr. A.S. Kiran Kumar? Is it Mr. K. Sivan? Or is it Mr. K. Radhakrishnan? Well, let's understand a few things. First of all, about Von Karman Award. The International Academy of Astronautics, IAA, was also founded by Von Karman, who was the first president of the organization, which is committed to expanding the frontiers in space. The Von Karman Award was established in 1982 and is the premier award for the Academy. It is given annually to recognize outstanding lifetime achievements in any branch of science without limit of nationality or gender. The award honors the memory of the Academy's founder and president, founder and first president, a scientist of the highest international reputation. Now, ISRO chief, Indian Space uh, Research Organization chief, Mr. K. Sivan, has been named for Von Kamar Award 2020 by the IAA. Dr. Sivan is going to receive the award in March 2021 in Paris, France. Right. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, and uh, you should be, uh, you should remember that it was Mr. under uh, the leadership of Mr. K. Sivan that India, uh, you know, uh, launched the space mission to moon. Right. So that's the thing. Okay. Then, uh, Mr. K. Sivan, as you know, today he is the chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization. Previously, he has served as the director of the Vikram Vikram Sarabhai Space Center and the Liquid Professional. Uh, propulsion uh, Systems Center, right. Uh, then we have uh, Mr. Radam uh, Narasimha. He too is an Indian ace uh, uh, aerospace scientist and fluid dynamist. He was a professor of aerospace engineering at the Indian Institute of Science, IISC, and he served there from 1962 to 1999. He was also the director of the National Aerospace Laboratories, NAL, from 1984 to 1993, and the chairman of the Engineering Mechanics Unit at Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, which is JNCASR, Bangalore, from 2000 to 2014, India. He is now the DST Year of Science Chair Professor at JNCA. SR, you know, the one, the center that we discussed earlier, which is Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, and concurrently holds the Pratt and Whitney Chair in Science and Engineering at the University of Hyderabad. Right. And Mr. Narasimha was awarded the Padma Vibhushan India's second highest civilian award in 2013. Right. Okay. Then we have Mr. Satish Reddy. You know, he is a politician and member of the Bharati Janta Party. Reddy is a member of the Karnataka Legislative Assembly from the Baman Hali constituency, constituency, uh, constituency in Bangalore Urban District. Right. Uh, then we have Mr. A. S. Kiran Kumar, or the full name is Mr. Aluru Silin Kiran Kumar. He is an again, you know, an Indian space scientist and former chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization. And he uh, resumed office on 14th of January 2015. He is credited with the development of key scientific instruments aboard the Chandrayaan 1 and the Mangala Mangalyaan spacecrafts, right? The ones that we witnessed re recently. Uh, we were actually going to land at that area of the moon, the polar region of the moons, where uh, very few spacecrafts have ever landed. It was a very, very difficult mission. And in the first go itself, we were, you know, almost on the verge of, uh, you know, uh, getting everything right when it was only a matter of few, few kilometers, you know, when we just uh, missed it and, uh, you know, our uh, spacecraft actually cra crashed at that point of time. It was a very heartbreaking moment for all of us. 
right then we have mr uh, k radhakrishna you know he's a more famous name than uh, you know he is an indian space scientist who headed the indian space research organization between november 2009 and december 2014 as chairman of space commission secretary of the department of space and chairman of isro though now you know mr k sivan is now more popular you know in terms of especially because of the moon mission that he undertook it was a very very courageous uh, mission if you ask me okay let's continue everybody uh, so here the answer is going to be mr k sivan you know who has been named a winner of the 2020 von karman award by the paris based international academy of astronautics iaa right so that's the thing okay so the next question that we have on the screen is the unesco world heritage site of hagia sophia in istanbul will now reopen on july 24 as a mosque you know uh, iconic structure istanbul is in where right uh, well istanbul is you know is where is a very easy answer but we must understand something about you know hagia sophia it's actually is formerly the church of hagia sophia you know he was actually a saint and in his name you know the church of hagia sophia was created is a late antique place of worship in istanbul so it has a lot of uh, historical relevance and this church has a lot of relevance for the christians as well it was built in 537 as the patriarchal cathedral of the imperial capital of constantinople and it was the largest christian church of the eastern roman empire which was also called the byzantine empire except during the latin empire from 1204 to 1261 when it became the roman catholic cathedral right so for the christians this uh, church uh, you know the church of hagia sophia holds a lot of importance and the byzantine empire was so huge that uh, you know it covered the turkey area as well in 19, in 1453 however after the fall of the constantinople in the ottoman empire it was converted into a muslim mosque in 1935 the secular turkish republic established it as a museum but in 2020 it has been reopened as a mosque right and a lot of controversies have been going around it so istanbul is the capital of turkey right okay then the next question which we have is which ministry has constituted a task force headed by jaya jaitley to evaluate issues related to infant mortality rate and maternal uh, maternal mortality, mortality rate so infant mortality rate is you know as soon as a child dies for some reason or the other uh, you know during the birth as well as uh, you know uh, just after a few months the child happens to die so we tend to calculate the infant mortality rate accordingly maternal mortality rate essentially means when a woman becomes a mother uh you know uh, maybe during pregnancy while giving birth as well as well as you know after a few months of giving birth you know uh, sometimes you know mothers they have to go through a uh, very difficult time and you know uh, and sometimes and many a time you know many mothers have actually given up given their life during this particular period right thanks to the advancements of science and the development of uh, you know medical facilities within india these things have come down to a very low level yet you know we should get rid of it as soon as possible because the factors because of which you know an infant dies or a mother dies is very much controllable right and it is really due to uh, diseases right so that's the thing uh, so the ministry of women and child development wcd has set up a task force to look into factors that affect uh, maternal mortality, mortality rate mmr among indian women The task force headed by Jaya Jaitley has been mandated with inquiring into matters pertaining to age of motherhood, imperatives of lowering MMR, improvement of nutritional levels, and related issues. Right. So that's the thing. The Ministry of Health and Welfare, Family Welfare, is charged with health policy in India. It is also responsible for all government programs relating to, relating to family planning in India. the current office holders you know miss you i think many of you already know mr harshvardhan he is the union minister for the ministry of uh, of the health and welfare uh, family welfare ministry and then we have mr fagan singh kulaste who happens to be the minister of state right uh, then uh, we have the minister of women and child 
development is responsible for formulation and administration of the rules and regulations and laws relating to women and child development in India. And the office holders happens to be uh, Deba Shri Chaudhary and Mr. Krishna Raj, who happen to be the Minister of State. And then we have uh, Mrs. Smriti Rani, who happens to be the Union Minister of this particular ministry. And you should know that uh, Smriti Rani, uh, you know, uh, defeated uh, uh, Rahul Gandhi in the previous election, so which is uh, pretty huge, you know. Then we have Ministry of Home Affairs is mainly responsible for the maintenance of internal security and domestic policies. And we all already know our Home Minister, who is Mr. Amit Shah, right? Then we have the Ministry of Rural Development, which is entrusted with the task of accelerating the social economic development of rural India. Its focus is on health, education, drinking water, housing, and roads. And the we have two union. We have uh, Mr. Narendra Singh Tomar, Tomar as the union minister, and then we have Mr. Ram Kripal Yadav as the Minister of State, right? And then we have the Minister. Ministry of Science and Technology, which is charged with the formulation and administration of the rules and regulations and laws relating to science and technology in India. And this too is headed by Mr. Harshwadhan, who is the Union Minister, and Mr. Y.S. Chaudhary, who is the Minister of State. Right. So the point here is, uh, the ministry which has been constituted, constituted to task, uh, you know, which has constituted a task force uh, headed by Jaya Jaitley to evaluate issues relating to infant mortality rate and maternal mort mortality rate is the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Take, you know? The answer is two in that question. Okay, which of the following has developed an application called Flyzy for consistent and contactless air travel during the COVID-19 pandemic? Is it IIT Delhi? Is it IIT Guwahati? Is it IIT Bombay or do you think it is IIT Madras or maybe it could be IIT Kharagpur? What is the right answer in this case? Well, let's try and discover. The Indian Institute of Technology, it is actually IIT Guwahati, which has successfully prepared an app named uh, as FlyZ. It's actually basically a startup which is in uh, IIT Guwahati, which has actually developed this, uh, uh, you know, I have named FlyZ for consistent and contactless air travel amid the COVID-19 pandemic. It aims to give contactless loading up, loading up, remembering the simpler stuff uh, drops, reasonable stoppings, better shopping experience, and giving important updates amid the entire excursion. Apart from this, FlyZ will help in directing them all together and aims to furnish them with a simple comprehension and usage of a few a terminal capacity so it's a fantastic app that is coming in which can really help during the COVID-19 right and there are talks about you know creating air bubbles in order to uh, you know protect the passengers and you know to start international air travel as well as domestic air travel and that industry is really 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 suffering because of the COVID-19 pandemic right and let's hope if everything goes well by the end of August we should have some form of the vaccine or the other so the basically FlyZ, this app application has been created by iit delhi of the other IITs, you already know you know there's nothing much to be talked about who among the following is the chairman of the committee for the welfare of the freedom fighters is it mr amit shah is it mr g kishan reddy is it mr rajnath singh is it shripad yeso naik or is it smriti rani right well the home minister ministry features a separate division you know to serve freedom fighters right who are alive and their families right it disperses pension to about 30,000 freedom fighters and their families right even to this day this committee is chaired by the ministry of state for home affairs mr g Krishna and kishan reddy and nine other eminent freedom fighters from across the country right so that's the thing uh, Mr. Amit Shah, you already know the Home Minister, uh, but uh, let's first look at Mr. G. Kishan Reddy or Ganga Puram Kishan Reddy. You know, he is an Indian politician who currently serves as Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India. He is a member of the Bharatiya Janata Party. He is an he is an MP representing Sikandrabad since 2019. Right. Then we have uh, Mr. 
एस वाई नायक और श्रीपद यसु नायक हु हैपन्स टू बी एन इंडियन पॉलिटिशियन एंड द यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट इन द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुर्वेदा योगा एंड नेचुरोपैथी यूनानी सिद्धा एंड होम्योपैथी एंड मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर डिफेंस एज वेल ही वॉज द फॉर्मर यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर राइट सो दैट इज मिस्टर एस वाई नायक राइट श्रीपद यसु नायक देन वी हैव ऑफकोर्स मिस्टर अमित शाह and uh, i don't know how many of you actually know his full name is mr amit anil chandra shah right and he is a current home minister he served as a party president as well of janata party from 2014 to 2020 and uh, the bharatiya janata party has achieved great success during this particular period of time he was elected to the lower house of parliament lok sabha in the 2019 indian general elections from gandhinagar so that's where from where mr amit shah actually won the elections mr rajna singh all of you know he is a defense minister and uh, you had seen his photos giving speech from uh, ladakh and motivating our armed forces he is the former president of bharatiya janata party he has previously previously served, served as a chief minister of uttar pradesh as well and as a cabinet minister in the vajpay government you know he was the home minister in the first modi government ministry and today uh you know after uh, the victory in 2019 he is currently serving as the defense minister right ms the ms smriti zubin irani you know is she's a household name she was earlier she was actually earlier she was a model uh, television actress you know kabhi saaz bhi bahut hi i think a very popular one which you all have seen and she she also has been a producer irani is a minister in the union cabinet of india ministry of science and welfare development and all that we have already seen right so she has she actually held holds two union ministry you know with herself so here the right answer is to mr g kishan reddy you know he is the chairman of the committee for the welfare of the freedom fighters let's go further everybody scheduled commercial bank gets licenses under as it Banking Regulation Act 1949 is it Banking Regulation Act 1952 is it Banking Regulation Act 1955 or is it RBI Act 1934 or is it RBI Act 1949 many of the ones mentioned here are not even an act but let's try and understand things in detail so the Banking Regulation Act 1949 you know regulates all banking firms in India so that's the most important act 1949 The act provides a framework under which commercial banks in India is supervised and regulated right so the act supplements the companies act 1956 so it tends to come supplement the companies act so we have companies act to govern the companies but companies act i know they do not apply on banks for banks we have banking regulation act 1949 primary agricultural credit society and cooperative land mortgage banks are excluded from the act the act gives uh, the reserve bank of india the power to license banks have regulate regulation over shareholding and voting rights of shareholders supervise the appointment of their board and boards and management and regulate the operations of banks lay down instructions for auditors control moratorium mergers and liquidations so all of these functions are carried out by the rbi now it also issues uh, directives in the interest of public good and on on banking policy and imposes uh, penalties as well you know, so that's banking regulation act 1949 and 1952 uh, we did not have a banking regulations act but we had a for- forward contract you know regulation act which established and uh, you know cons- which established and uh, constituted the forward uh, you know which led to the establishment and constitution of the forward to market commission so that's forward contractual act for you then in 1955 we again did not have any banking regulations and rather we had uh, the state bank of india act and uh, which led to the establishment of uh, state bank and then you know what was written in the provision was a bank to be called the state bank of india shall be constituted to carry on the business of banking and other businesses in accordance with the provision of the act of this act and for the purpose of taking over the undertaking of the imperial bank so it was the provision for the undertaking of the imperial bank as well right then we have the reserve bank of india act 1934 this is a genuine act and is the legislative act 
under which the Reserve Bank of India was formed. This act, along with the Companies Act, which was amended in 1936, were meant to provide a framework for the supervision of banking firms in India. Right. And there is no such thing as RBI Act 1949. Neither there is any associated act for that particular period. So the scheduled commercial banks, they get the licenses under the Banking Regulation Act 1949. Banking Regulation Act 1949. Okay, friend. Okay, everyone. Now let's move to the next slide. Dash is the risk of default on the debt that may arise from a borrower failing to make required payments. Is it uh, credit risk? Is it market risk? Is it product risk? Or is it prepayment risk? Or do you think it is lender's risk let us try and understand each of these terms that are given here first of all we have the credit risk credit risk is a risk of default on a debt that may arise from a borrower failing to make requirement required payments in the first resort the risk is that of the lender and in and includes lost principal and interest, disruption to cash flows and increased collection costs. The loss may be complete or partial. Then we have product risk. You know, product risk is the uh, product risk is the set of things that could go wrong with the service, software, or whatever is being produced by the project. Right. Then we have a prepayment risk is a risk involved with the premature return of principal on a fixed income security. So when prepayment occurs, investors must reinvest at current market interest rates, interest rates which are usually substantially lower. So prepayment risk mostly affects corporate bonds and mortgage backed securities. Uh, then we have uh, the other ma major risks you know faced by the banks include the credit operational market and liquidity risk all of this can be classified as lenders risk as well and of course uh, then we have the market risk here market risk is because of the volatility in the market you know uh, they get they could be uh, losses that could be assumed by a lender and that is also known as market risk take it up so here the risk of uh, so credit risk is the risk of default and debt that may arise from a borrower failing to make required payments right so that is credit risk for you okay friends let's move to the next slide now the next question says union minister mr ramesh uh, pokhrial nishank has recently released the pragyata guidelines on digital education through online medium in New Delhi. So Pragyata stands for which of these are options? Is it plan, review, arrange, guide, yak, assign, track, appreciate, or is it plan, renew, arrange, guide, yak, assign, track, you know, appreciate? Uh, you know, is it is it that or is it plan, register, arrange, guide, yak, assign, tech, teach, appreciate, or is it plan, review, announce, guide, yak, a lot, track, appreciate, or is it plan, review, accord, guide, yak uh, which is talk essentially assign teach and alleviate let us first understand something about pragyata now there are many guidelines that have been laid under pragyata the first thing is you know the primary students sure you know the classes for the primary students should not be for more than 30 seconds because concentrating online uh, during online classes can be really very tough and two online sessions of up to 30 to 45 minutes each should be conducted for classes from 1 to 8 and 4 sessions for classes from 9 to 12. Take it up. So that is the guidelines under this one. There are additional guidelines as well. That is, it needs assessment, regular assessment. Concerns while planning online and digital education like duration, screen time, inclusiveness, balanced online and offline activities, etc. Level wise, you know, all of these things should be planned. Modalities of intervention, including resource curation, level wise delivery, etc. You know, all of these things again should be planned. Physical, mental health, and well being during digital education. So, this is also needed. Cyber safety and ethical practices, including precautions and measures 
for maintaining cyber uh, safety so this is also important and then finally collaboration and conve convergence with various initiatives that also needs to be done right so basically uh, the full form for Pragyata Science for Plan Review Arranged Guide YAG Assigned Track and Appreciate which is option number one let's move to the next question who among the following persons will release a new book titled a song of india to mark 70 years of his or her literary journey a very prominent name is it going to be paro anand is it going to be uma krishnaswamy is it going to be raskin bond is it going to be sudha murthy or is it rupa pai let's look at a few things a new book you know actually this uh, song of india is a new book of mr uh, of uh, raskin bond so a new book by beloved writer Ruskin Bond will shed light on his lesser known life before he became a successful author. You know, publishers Puffin Books, which is an imprint of uh, Penguin Random House India, announced on Friday. Right. Uh, that is, uh, so the illustrated book, A Song of India, was released on July 20th, which marks the uh, 70th year of Bond's literary career. Right. So that's the thing. Uh, Mr. Ruskin Bond, you know, he is an actual, he's actually an Indian author, but uh, he has a British uh, dis uh, descent, right? He lives with his adopted family in Landor, Missouri. It's a very beautiful and uh, cozy place, right? It's a very quiet place as well. The Indian Council for Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of children's literature in India. Then we have uh, Paro Anand, Ms. Paro Anand, she is an Indian author of books for children, young adults and adults uh, including novels, short stories and plays. She won the Sahitya Academy Bal Sahitya Puraskar in 2017 for her anthology Wild Child and Other Stories. She has spoken about and written extensively on children's literature in India. Uma Krishnaswamy is an author of picture books and novels for children and a writer and a writing teacher as well. She is recognized as a major voice in the expand, expanding of international and multicultural young adult fiction and children's literature. So that is Uma Krishnaswamy. Then we have Sudha Murthy, you know, who is an engineering teacher, you know, in Canada, and English author as well as social worker, you know, and she happens to be the wife of uh, Infosys co-founder. Mr. and Chairman as well, you know, uh, Mr. N. R. Narayana Murthy. Sudha Murthy began her professional career in computer science and engineering. That's uh, Sudha Murthy for you. And of course, we have uh, Ms. Rupa Pai. She's an, you know, Indian computer engineer, journalist and children's author. And she lives in Bangalore, India. So these are the other options of this particular question. So, A Song of India, you know, would be released, uh, which has actually already been uh, released and it's available on uh, Amazon. You can go and buy it from there. A Song of India, you know, has been released to mark 70 years of Ruskin Bond's literary journey in India. It actually talks about his life as well, right? So, if you're a fan of Ruskin Bond, you should read, you know, this book, which is A Song of India. Then we have who among the following persons has been named Vice President of the Philippines-based Asian Development Bank, ADB. Is it Chanda Kocher? Is it Mr. Ashok Lavasa? Is it going to be Naina Lal Kidwai? Or is it K.V. Kamath? Or do you think it is Arunthati Bhattacharya? Any guesses, by the way? Let's try and look at, look at a few things. Uh, it's important to know about everything, you know. So you should never, you know, only focus on learning the data points. Try and go behind the history of you know each of these data points and try and know about each of these persons that are actually mentioned there. So Asian Development Bank, you know, you know, this has appointed Mr. Ashok Lavasa as Vice President for Private Sector Operations and Public Private Partnerships. He will succeed Divakar Gupta, whose term will end on 31st of August. Right. The Asian Development Bank is actually a regional development bank established on 19th of December. 1966 which is headquartered in the Ortigas center located in the city of you know uh, Mandalu Wong Metro Manila Philippines so basically you should just remember that Asian Development Bank is established in Manila Philippines 
The company also maintains 31 field offices around the world to promote social and economic developments in Asia. The current president of Asian Development Bank is uh, Masad Sugu Asakawa. Masad Sugu Asakawa, right. Is the current president. Chandra Kochar is a very prominent name in the field of banking. Uh, she was she's the former managing director and chief executive officer of ICICI Bank. However, on 4th of October 2018, she had to step down from her position following allegations of corruption. Right. Ms. Nela Lal Kidwai, she again is an Indian banker. Quite prominent again, charter accountant and business executive. She was formerly a group general manager in the country head of HSBC India. She is also a former president of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, which is FIKI, better known as FIKI. KV Kamad is was the you know instrument instrumental in the growth of uh, ICICI Bank, you know. So Kunda. Kundapur uh, Vaman Kamath, commonly referred to as KV Kamath, was the former chief of the new development uh, bank of BRICS countries. Previously, he, he has also served as the chairman of Infosys Limited, the second largest Indian IT services company, and as the non-executive chairman of ICSA Bank, India's largest multiplied bank. It was during that time. And Kamath also served as ICSA Bank's founder and managing director and CEO from 1st of May 1996 until his retirement from executive responsibilities on 30th of April 2009. During his time, uh, ICICI Bank got itself well established, you know. They really worked hard, you know. Uh, at the red lights, you know, uh, uh, in the metropolitan cities, they, they used to get hold of people, you know, and, uh, you know, persuade them to open accounts with them. And they really, really worked very hard to, be, to come to the position that they are right now. And then we have Ms. Ms. Sarundati Bhattacharya. She is a retired Indian banker and former chairman of the State Bank of India. She is the first woman to be the chairman of State Bank of India. In 2016, she was listed as the 25th most powerful woman in the world of in the world by Forbes. You know, so that's Mrs. Arundhati Bhattacharya for you. So here, Mr. Ashok Sava, uh, uh, Lavasa has been named as Vice President of the Philippines-based Asian Development Bank. Okay, friends. Then we have India's first indigenously developed vaccine against pneumonia named pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate vaccine or PPSV23. It has been developed and manufactured by which company is it? Aurobindo Pharma. Is it Dr. Reddy's Laboratories? Is it Bharat Biotech? Or is it Serum Institute of India? Or is it National Institute of Virology? Let's try and understand a few things. The, pneumoco the pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate vaccine or PPSV223, it offers protection against 23 types of pneumonia causing bacteria, which cause you know, a range of infections including uh, meningitis, bacteremia, pneumonia, and blood infections. So it's a fantastic, fantastic discovery by, you know, Indian scientists. The vaccine has been developed and manufactured by the Serum Institute, you know, of India. So, uh, the founder is of uh, Serum Institute of India is Mr. Cyrus S. Punawala, and it is headquartered in, uh, the headquarters are in Pune. Then we have Aurobindo Pharma Limited. You know, it is a pharmaceutical company, uh, manuf pharmaceutical manufacturing company headquartered in high tech city Hyderabad. Right. The company manufactures generic pharmaceuticals and active pharmaceutical ingredients. It was founded in 1986. Headquarters are there in Hyderabad. And the founders of this company were P. V. Ramprasad Reddy and K. Nityananda, Nityananda Reddy. Then we have Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. You know, it is an Indian multinational pharmaceutical company located in Hyderabad again, which is now and Hyderabad now is part of Telangana. Right, the company was found founded by Anji Reddy, who previously uh, worked in the Mentor Institute uh, Indian Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited. So founder is Kalam Anji 
Reddy, it was founded in 1984, and the current CEO is Mr. Erez Israeli. Mr. Erez Israeli. So you can see that Dr. Reddy truly has gained a multinational reputation. Then we have uh, Bharat Biotech. You know, Bharat Biotech is an international limited, uh, you know, Bharat, sorry, Bharat Biotech International Limited is an Indian biotechnology company headquartered in Hyderabad, India, engaged in the drug discovery, drug development, manufacture of vaccines, biotherapeutics, pharmaceuticals, and healthcare products. And it was founded in 1996. That's Bharat Biotech for you. Then we have National Institute of Virology, Pune. It is an Indian Virology Institute, Research Institute, and one of the trans Transla uh, translational uh, science translational science cells part of Indian Council of Medical Research part of my uh, weak scientific uh, terminology usage it was previously known as a widest research center and was founded in collaboration with the Rockefeller Foundation the headquarters are located in Pune and the parent organizations are Indian Council of Medical Research so basically, PP, uh, PPS V23 or pneumococcal polysaccharide conjugate vaccine is being manufactured by Serum Institute of India. Then we have the next question that we have is which of the following is a measurement of a country's trade in which the value of goods and services it imports exceeds the value of goods and services it exports? You know. So, which is the measure of a country's trade in which the value of goods and services it imports exceeds the value of goods and services it exports. Let's try and understand all the terms given the options. So, the current account deficit is a measurement of a country's trade with the value of the goods and services it imports exceeds the value of the products it exports. The current account includes net income such as interest and dividends and transfers such as foreign aid, although these components make up only a small percentage of the total current account. So the current account represents a country's foreign transactions and, like the capital account, is a component of a country's balance of payment. Right, so current account is a very important uh, measure. Right. A capital gain tax you know, is a tax on the profit realized on the sale of a non-inventory asset. So the most common capital gains are realized from the sale of stocks, bonds, precious metals, real estate and property. Right. Then we have a consumer price index. You know, it measures changes in the price level of a weighted average market basket of consumer goods and services purchased by households. So CPI is a statistical estimate constructed using the prices of a sample of representative items whose prices are collected period of, uh, pe periodically. Sorry. Right, so that is consumer price index value. Then the next term that we have is fiscal consolidation. It refers to the policies undertaken by governments, national as well as subnational levels, to reduce the deficits and accumulation of debt stock. You know. So the key deficits of governments are the revenue deficit and the fiscal deficit, right? So then, uh, then we have a uh, fiscal deficit. Sorry, is the difference between the total income of the government, total taxes and non-debt capital receives, and its total expenditure, right? So what do you mean by fiscal deficit? A recurring high fiscal deficit means that the government has been spending beyond its means. So the lower the fiscal deficit, the better it is for the government, right? So basically, current account deficit, you know, is the measurement of a country's trade in which the value of goods and services it imports, right? Exceeds the value of goods and services it exports, right? So that's the thing. Then we have, with which of the following has EM pays payment systems or M pays payment systems India partners to partner to launch contactless ATM solutions in India? Is it Visa? Is it Mastercard? 
is it are you pay or is it american express or is it all the above okay so cloud based payment uh, solutions provider mpay's payment systems india has partnered with mastercard to launch contactless atm solutions in india due to covid-19 pandemic under the partnership mastercard will help mpay's to launch cardless atm powered by mastercard so basically mpay's payment systems has has partnered with mastercard and mastercard you already know in mastercard incorporated uh, is an american multinational financial services corporation headquartered in the mastercard international global headquarters in uh, purchase new york uh, united states and the ceo of mastercard is ajay singh banga then we have visa visa inc is an american multinational financial services corporation headquartered in foster city california united states it facilitates electronic fund transfers to the world most commonly through visa branded credit cards debit cards and prepaid cards and the ceo of visa is alfred f kelly jr then we have are you pay and it's a very own indian thing so rupay or are you pay rupay is a is a, is a more popular name is a card scheme conceived and launched by the national payment corporations of india on 26th of march 2012 it was created to fulfill the reserve bank of india's vision to have a domestic open and multilateral system of payments so are you pay facilitates electronic payment at all indian banks and financial institutions so the owner of uh, are you pay is national payment corporations of india then we have american express you know so the american express company also known as amex is an american multinational financial services corporation headquartered at 200 west west street in new york city would you just remember new york city you know so the company was founded in 1850 and is one of the 30 components of the dow jones industrial average so dow jones industrial average is something like bsc bomb stock exchange actually bsc followed dow jones uh, industrial average right it's not the other way around so the ceo ceo of american express is mr stephen squarely right so uh mpay's payment systems has actually partnered with mastercard then we have which of the following states has launched panchavati yojana for the senior citizens of the rural of rural areas of the state is it maharashtra uttar pradesh is it himachal pradesh jharkhand or do you think it is bihar well himachal pradesh chief minister mr jay ram thakur launched the panchavati yojana for senior citizens of rural areas in the state so under this scheme parks and gardens will be developed in all the development blocks with necessary facilities under the manrega scheme of rural development department so in a way all the laborers who have returned you know to himachal pradesh they'll get you know employment under the scheme so that's the thing so here the right answer is himachal pradesh and it is this state which has launched the panchvati yojana then we have catherine de sullivan she has become the first woman to reach the deepest point of the ocean you know challenger deep mariana trench she is also the first american woman to you know is it to walk in space to stay longest in space to climb mount everest you know or was she a fighter pilot or did she win a nobel prize let's try and understand a few things So the first American woman to walk in space has become the first woman to reach the deepest known spot in the ocean and it is Catherine or Cathy Sullivan at 68 an astronaut and oceanographer emerged from her 35830 uh, 10 foot dive to the Challenger deep according to EYOS expeditions a company coordinating the logistics of the missions at 68 you know we sometimes feel old in our 30s some feel old in the 20s you know and this woman at 68 is achieving great things so catherine de sullivan has become the first woman to reach the deepest point of the ocean as well as she is the first american woman to walk in space 
Then India has joined the GPI or GPay. Okay, GPay as a founding member. It is related to. Is it related to vaccines, artificial intelligence, extradition, tax evasion, or is it none of these? So basically, India has joined leading nations of the world, including USA, UK, EU, Australia, among others, as a founding member of a League of Nations, which has launched a global partnership on artificial intelligence. You know, so basically, GPA is related to artificial intelligence. The other terms you already know: extradition is when you bring in a known offender, you know, to be tried by the local laws. That is extradition. Tax evasion is when you're evading taxes. Vaccine is something which you already know. Which firm has been appointed as auditors of the PM Cares Fund? Is it Deloitte? Is it KPMG? Or is it Sark Associates? Or is it Lodhan Company? Or is it SS Kothari? Well, so the website PMKs, uh, you know, dot uh, gov dot in says. Trustees of the fund, which is called Prime Minister Citizen Assist, uh, Citizens Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situation or PMKS Fund, appointed SARS and Associated, SARC and Associates, no, not SARS, it is S A R C, SARC and Associated and Associates Chartered Accountants New Delhi as the auditors for three years. And the firm is headed by Mr. Sunil Kumar Gupta, which audits the, which is going to audit the, P, which also audits the PM National Relief Fund. So. There is definitely going to be audit for the PMK's fund, and many people had been demanding the same. Deloitte, or the full form of the company is Deloitte Touche to Hamatsu Limited, commonly referred to as Deloitte, is actually a multinational professional services network. It offers wide range of uh, services. You know, so Deloitte is one of the big four accounting organizations in the world and the largest professional service network in the world by revenue and number of professionals, which. Uh, you know, with headquarters in London, United Kingdom, right? And the CEO is Mr. Puneet Ranjan. Mr. Puneet Ranjan. Then we have KPMG International Cooperative. It is again a multinational professional services network and one of the big four accounting organizations. It is seated in uh, Amstelveen, the Netherlands. KPMG is a network of firms in 147 countries with over 219,000 employees and has three lines of services, financial audit, tax and advisory. So the CEO is William B. Thomas. Then we have Lodha and Company is one of the leading homegrown accounting and consulting firms in India. Abhishek Lodha is the managing director and chief executive of Lodha Group. And uh, of course we have SS Kothari Methan Company is another uh, accounting company and Mr. Karan Mehta happens to be the owner, right? So here, uh, Sark and Associates have been appointed as auditors of the PMKS fund. So answer is three. Okay, then India has been elected as the non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council for 2021 and 22. Which countries also won the Security Council elections along with India? Are they Ireland, Kenya, Mexico? So which among these? Is it Ireland and Kenya or is it all the three of them? Well, uh, just a little bit, you know, uh, before I give out the answers. India was elected as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, UNSC, for a two-year term, you know, whereas with an overwhelming majority, it got 184 votes in the General Assembly that consists of 193 members. So it was a huge, huge win for India. And along with India, Ireland, Kenya and Mexico also became the non-permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. It's only because of China, India is not so able to become a permanent member. But soon we shall be. We shall be one day. So the currency that a government has declared to be a legal tender but is not backed by a physical commodity is called is a banknote, is it bill of exchange, is it fiat money, is it demand draft, or is it check? So a banknote is a negotiable promissory note which one party can use to pay another party 
a specific amount of money. So a banknote is payable to the bearer on demand and the amount payable is apparent on the face of the note. So banknotes are considered legal tender along with coins. They make up the bearer forms of all modern money. So we all know about banknotes. A bill of exchange is a written order used primarily in international trade that binds one party to pay a fixed sum of money to another party on demand or at a predetermined date. Bills of exchange are similar to checks and promissory notes. They can be drawn by individuals or banks and are generally transferable by endorsements. Then we have fiat money. It's a currency established as money, often by government regulations, but that does not have intrinsic value. So fiat money does not have use value, has value only because a government maintains its value or because parties engaging in exchange agree on its value. So that is fiat money. Take it so that's the thing. And uh, demand draft, we already know about that. A demand draft is a negotiable instrument similar to a bill of exchange. A bank issues a demand draft to a client directly, uh, you know, directing another bank or one of its own branches to pay a certain sum, uh, specified sum to the specified party. So a demand draft can also be compared to a check. However, demand drafts are difficult to counter demand, counter bank. Then we have a check. A check is a document that orders a bank to pay a specific amount of money from a person's account to the person in whose name the check has been issued. The person writing the check, known as a drawer, has a transaction banking account where their money is held. Right, so these are all we know. So basically, the currency that our government has declared to be a legal tender but is not backed by a physical commodity is called fiat money. The next question says which of the following has developed airborne rescue port for isolation, isolated transportation? Is it Indian Army? Is it Indian Air Force? Is it Indian Navy? The Defense Research Development Organization or is it NGRI? Right. So this uh, airborne rescue port has actually been developed by Indian Air Force. You know, it has designed, developed and inducted an airport res uh, rescue port for isolated transportation or a air pit, you know, you can call this as. This port will be utilized for evacuation of critical patients with infectious diseases, including COVID-19 from high altitude areas, isolated and remote places. Supporting the Atmanirbhan Bharat initiative, only indigenous materials have been used to fabricate this port. So we are not importing any material from outside. Requirement of an air evacuation system with facility to prevent spread of infectious aerosol from a COVID-19 patient during air travel was felt by IAF when the disease was declared as a pandemic. Right. So this has been developed by the Indian Air Force. Right. So that's the thing. So which countries, so the next question says, which countries railways became the first railway to run double stack container train with high reach pantograph in high rise OHE territory, right? So is it India, China, USA, Germany or UK? Well, a new world benchmark has been created by Indian railways recently by running the first double stack container train in high rise overhead equipment OHE electrified sections of the western railway zone so this achievement is by india so india you know uh, india's railways becomes the first railway to run uh, double stack container train with high reach pantograph in high rise OHE territory so the right answer is india Next question, you know, deals with, you know, this thing. So, so uh, the appointment of Mr. Shyam Srinivasan. Uh, the, so the Reserve Bank of India has recently approved the reappointment of Shyam Srinivasan as Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of DASH till September 22, 2021. Is it Dhan Lakshmi Bank? Is it Federal Bank? Is it Kotak Mahindra Bank? Is it IDFC First Bank? Or is it RBL Bank? Okay, let's try and understand a few things. 
So, Mr. Sri, uh, sorry, Sri Shyam uh, Srinivasan took charge as the uh, managing director and chief executive officer of the Federal Bank Limited, a major private commercial bank in India. He took over as the CEO of the bank on 23rd of September 2010. That time, he was the CEO, and now he is promoted as you know he's, he has both the roles, you know, managing director as well as chief, you know, chief executive officer. So he has a degree uh, from NIT Tiruchirappalli, and uh, you know he has a. PGDM that is uh, MBA from Indian Institute of Management Calcutta and he has also done a leadership development program from London Business School as well so that's Mr. Uh, Shyam Srinivasan for you and uh, Federal Bank is an Indian private sector bank you know uh, is an Indian private sector bank scheduled com is an Indian private sector scheduled commercial bank scheduled under uh, Banking Regulation Act 1949 you know, and it is headquartered in Aluba, Kochi right then we have Kotak Mahindra Bank and it's, an, it's a very popular bank we already know but that is an Indian private sector bank headquartered in Mumbai, Maharashtra, India it offers banking products and financial services for corporate and retail customers in the areas of personal finance, investment banking, life insurance and wealth management the CEO happens to be Uday Kotak. IDFC First Bank is an Indian banking company with headquarters in Mumbai that forms part of IDFC, an integrated infrastructure finance company. So the bank started operations on 1st of October 2015. So IDFC First received a universal banking license from the Reserve Bank of India in July 2015. So the CEO of IDFC First Bank happens to be Mr. V. Vedyanathan, right? And RBL Bank was formerly known as Ratnakar Bank. It is an Indian private sector bank headquartered in Mumbai and it was founded in 1943, right? So here the right answer is Federal Bank. So Mr. Shyam uh, Srinivasan, he was appointed as matching director as well as chief executive officer till September 22, 20, uh, still September 2021, you know, he was, and he's the MD and CEO of Federal Bank. Then we have Arjuna Awadi, Ramesh Tikaram passed away recently. He was associated with, you know, let's know a little bit about Mr. Ramesh Tikaram. Uh, he was the international para-athlete instrumental in popularizing para-badminton in India, had dealt with polio since he was two. On 16th of July 2020, the Arjuna Award winner died of COVID-19 in Bangalore. He was 51 and survived by wife and two children. Right. So he was a para badminton player. Okay, friends. So next question talks about in collaboration with which of the following, which company has a central board of secondary education, CBAC, plan to integrate artificial intelligence in high school curriculum for the current academic year 2020 and 2021. So artificial intelligence is, you know, is a huge thing that is coming up in India, not in India, uh, the entire world. Uh, so basically, uh, artificial intelligence essentially means that the computer algorithms are able to adjust themselves according to the usage patterns of a customer or any other alternate behavior that a customer tends to exhibit, right? Uh, so that's the thing for example sometimes when you type in google you know when you type in certain words then it auto completes that's also an example of artificial intelligence right uh, driverless cars you know that you know people many like companies like uh, apple and uber are actually experimenting on driverless cars you know uh, that again is an example of artificial intelligence you know many safety features in aeroplane and uh, in many other vehicles and all you know that is because of artificial intelligence right so that's that is really meant to make our life easier amazon you already know is an e-commerce company google is well known for its search engine as well as you know its uh, marketing products like uh, uh, adsense and adwords ibm is a uh, service company in the field of IT information technology service company it is no more a hardware manufacturing company it sold its hardware business to Lenovo so now you know the Lenovo IBM uh, you know laptops that you actually see and Lenovo happens to be a Chinese company Apple 
is a very well-known company manufacturing laptops desktop computers smartphones ipads ipods and many other applications facebook mark zuckerberg's facebook we are already we already know about that right so here the right answer is ibm you know it is working with central board of secondary education and is planning to integrate artificial intelligence in high school curriculum who among the following is are the members of the financial stability and development council is it governor rbi chairman sebi uh, chairman irdai is it chairman pfr da or is it all of them let's try and understand a little bit about financial stability and development council so the financial stability and development council fsdc was constituted by an executive order of the union government as a non statutory apex body under the ministry of finance in 2010 so the membership of the fsdc is discussed below so the finance minister is the chairman of the fsdc member members of the fsdc include heads of the financial sector regulators listed below is the head of rbi the head of insurance regulatory and development authority of india the head of uh, securities and exchange board of india the head of pension fund regulatory and development authority of india pfrda and other members are you know finance secretary chief economic um, advisors and secretary of the department of financial services so the finance minister is the chairman of fsdc and the current finance minister is mrs uh, nirmala sitaraman so this is something that you should know right so here the correct answer is all of the above are the members of the financial stability and development council yes i hope that makes sense right so with this we come to the end of today's session so whenever it comes to learning current affairs and general knowledge in general right it is important that we make stories behind each of the data points that we come across and you know uh, like all learning processes remembering a story is way easier than remembering information or data points right so if you use this strategy whatever you will learn you will learn effectively so with this message i'd like to end the session thank you thank you very much thank you very much